He's been with me a long time. He's always supported me, always put up with my questions. So I really appreciate his help uh, throughout this project. Uh, about me, education-wise, I started grade school at Suburban Bethlehem. I went to Emmanuel St. Michael in eighth grade, and I ended up here. Uh, at Concordia, I'm involved, obviously, in Honors Academy. I've been in National Honor Society since my junior year. I'm the FCA chapter leader for Concordia, and then I'm also a front media leader. So, uh, helping out leading groups like that is something I, I really enjoy. Future plans, I am in Purdue's College of Engineering. Uh, I'm in first year engineering right now. Hopefully, uh, my sophomore year, I can specialize in the mechanical engineering. Uh, extracurriculars, uh, right now, well, I played basketball here at Concordia for my first three years. Uh, my senior year, I had the opportunity to take an internship. So uh, right now I intern in the Space and Airborne System Division of L3 Harris. So there I'm doing, uh, learning the basics of thermal analysis, uh, mechanical analysis for, for satellites and then rockets that they develop and sell to the government. So that, that's a little above my understanding at the moment, but that's why I'm taking an internship there and, and learning about it. That's a field I would love to get into. So it's, it's uh, extremely interesting stuff. Um, every day I go in there, I'm really excited to learn more. Uh, other ac extracurriculars, I've raised cattle uh, for show. Uh, well, to, I've raised cattle for meat production and show for, since third grade. Uh, that's something I do outside of school that I really find joy in. So uh, in terms of development of the project, uh, like Campbell said, we were introduced to this project freshman year. You know, there's a lot of thoughts in my head when I first hear about it. You know, I think, oh, I really love basketball. I should do something related to basketball. Well, uh, I really love uh, raising animals. I should, I should do something related to animals. And honestly, some of my advice to you guys would be pick something that maybe you don't know a whole lot about so you can really research more and get into something interesting. So I knew with my project, I wanted to try to solve a problem that a lot of students at Concordia have. So one day when I was bothering Mr. Jane with a billion questions junior year, we got on the topic of organic chemistry. So I don't know how many of you guys know about organic chemistry. It's a uh, <laughs> uh, it's a it's a branch of chemistry that you you don't really explore much in high school but sometimes you get into majors in college and kids are kind of blindsided by it because they don't really have a background in it uh, one of those kids was actually my sister she she went through Concordia here four years because she's four years older than me and she you know great grades all the way through through high school and she got into Purdue's vet program and it was a real struggle for her. She, she never had this introduction to organic chemistry and it kind of derailed her. Uh, well, obviously she, she's a vet now, she's, she's doing great. But she struggled, I don't mean derailed her. Uh, she struggled with it, but it, it was just a tough subject for her. And when me and Mr. Jane were talking about this, we thought, well, larger schools, you know, the Carrolls, the Homesteads, they are big enough that they can afford an introductory class to this. Well, it's a shame that Concordia can't do that. So I thought my project should be to help these people in need transition to college level chemistry um, without a, a proper class that Concordia can offer. So to discuss solutions of this, uh, me and Mr. Jane went through many, many iterations. We, at first, well, it would be great for this to be an in-person class. It'd be great for it to be a, you know, a credit hour. Everybody goes down and sits in the classroom. Somebody writes on the whiteboard. But that was just, that was not gonna be possible with how um, Concordia schedules. Well, what's the next best thing? Maybe it's a club that meets. Well, as Campbell mentioned, the complications with a club are immense here at Concordia. So that was not gonna be an option either. So I landed on doing a website that kids can interact with 
and do practice problems through there. The planning that went into that, again, was another long journey trying to figure out, okay, well, how do we structure this? Um, how do we deliver information in a way that's easy to digest and yet um, still offers you know, a lot of information on this really big subject of organic chemistry. So applications of the course, you know, some people might hear organic chemistry and think, well, that's, that's a really niche thing, you know, who, apart from a few college students, who really needs to know much about organic chemistry? Well, it is, um, this course is very helpful for kids, regardless what major you're getting into, regardless of how much chemistry you took in high school. So firstly, it helps strengthen the chemistry that you already received here at Concordia. Concordia's chemistry program is great, but for kids heading into college that it's maybe been a year or two since they did any of this, uh, it's really helpful to build up some of those old skills, knock off some rust before you go into college. Uh, secondly, the understanding building for college, this was the, the main point of doing this for kids that are going into a field like um, vet medicine that requires organic chemistry, you're going to need this baseline knowledge. And then lastly, there's real world applications throughout this course. So even for kids that are not going to college, there, there's information on um, the future of biofuels, how soybeans are being made into uh, fuel for cars. There's information on medicine, how you know if you're taking the right medicine. There's uh, dietary information, what's trans fat, what's cis fat, those kind of things. So even for kids that are not using this for uh, university reasons, it's still extremely helpful. So to talk a little bit about the structure of the course, there's five topics. Well, looking at the, at the topic numbering, you might be wondering, well, why would you start at topic zero? Topic zero is actually a review of a lot of the chemistry that you got either um, either in normal or AP chemistry. So that's why it's topic zero. That was Mr. Jane's idea of kind of a baseline understanding. Kids could skip it if they're coming off, if they're just coming off a chemistry class, or you could take it as a refresher. So as you go through the topics, they get um, progressively harder. They turn from topic zero, topic one, is maybe some stuff that you heard in class, you maybe did a little practice with it. Um, by the time you get to topic three, topic four, it is completely new material. You've probably never seen it before. It's a little higher level applications. Um, but if you're getting into a field that requires organic chemistry, it will still be uh, extremely helpful. The little numbers on the end of those different labels are the number of lessons in that topic. So. Most topics have three or four. Um, topic four, four just has two. Each of those lessons will have a page of explanations. It'll take about 15, 20 minutes, depending on the lesson. There'll be videos in there for kids to watch if they're not uh, learners by just reading. So each lesson will have videos, explanations, practice problems. Um, some have simulations, if I could find applicable simulations and then it'll have a 10 question quiz. At the end of each topic, there's a 25 question test going over each of the topic, or going over each of the lessons. And at the end of the course, there's a final test to summarize all the knowledge. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a sample lesson. If you have a phone and you wanna do it on your device, you can scan the QR code or you can follow along on the screen. All right, so this is lesson 2.3. This is in the, um, this is in the organic chemical reactions topic. And this is talking about the substitution and elimination reaction uh, mechanisms. So if you scroll down, you see a, a brief explanation about some vocab, then uh, hand-drawn 
diagrams. I tried to do as many hand-drawn diagrams as I could, make it as original as I can. Um, so you see this progression, uh, you see this progression of uh, alpha hydrogen, uh, some of the naming that goes into there. Uh, you scroll down, there's, there's the little explanation about substrates, and then there's a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, the different substitution reactions. I, I use Google Forms, or Google Sites for this, this website. One of the reasons I did that is there's a lot of different options with formatting that I can play around with. And so something like this where I could put two similar things side by side and you can see the comparison between those, I know to me that would be extremely helpful if I'm going through a class for the first time. Uh, in here you can see hyperlinked some videos. Now when I, when I kind of came to the conclusion that I would have to do this class online, I was a little bummed out that it couldn't be an in-person thing, but the further I got into this, the further I realized that it's actually an advantage because I could hyperlink other resources like videos from, from YouTube channels that do a really good job of explaining this stuff. I could hyperlink it directly into the website, so a video like this is just one click away. Um, going through some more explanations, every once in a while like this, I'll use a diagram that's a lot clearer than I could make from a different website. So of course I cite those at the bottom of the page. But uh, this, this lesson includes a, a Quizlet to go over some vocab. So we can go, for those familiar with Quizlet, it's a website you can use to review vocab. So this lesson was very vocabulary heavy. So uh, we've got a little Quizlet kids can use to review, review that. And we'll take a look at the quiz on the end of this. So again, this just goes over uh, what the lesson was about. The other nice thing about doing this class online is that when kids, when students will, will fill out this form, um, this quiz, it, it gets graded automatically and then it splits back, it spits back their score. And uh, for a little bit harder problems, I write explanations that it presents for each wrong answer for the student. So that, I know for me, that would be extremely helpful um, not, tell, not just telling me I got the question wrong, but also telling me why I got it wrong. So, we keep going on this presentation. So that is, that's the sample lesson that's from topic two. That's the third lesson in that uh, topic. I'd like to give my thanks to first, Mr. Jane. Mr. Jane's been extremely helpful. He helped me come up with the idea. Uh, once I wrote every lesson topic, he would uh, verify, help me fact check everything, help me make sure it looked great. So uh, I can't overstate how much of help he was through this whole process. Next, I'd like to thank Mrs. Erdos. Uh, she always kept me on track, hitting deadlines with this, which I, appreciate. Um, I'd like to thank my parents and my sister, well, my sister especially, as she served as some of the motivation to create this, my parents for being great and supporting me. And then I'd like to thank the rest of the Honors Academy, including Campbell, uh, helping motivate me and that kind of thing. So lastly, for any good college course, you need a diploma and you need a picture with the, the dean of the school. And so as a, as a treat for kids who complete this class, um, they do get both of those things. <laughs> so they can, they can put themselves right next to Mr. Jane um, receiving their diploma, which is shown on the right. All right, any questions for me? Lydia. That was a that was a struggle. So usually, um, me and Mr. Jane would meet. 
maybe on a towards the end of the week and we would talk about what the next topic should be so I would come in with research thinking you know what's really important topics that I need to address in this chapter because I really wanted to make sure this project didn't run on too long I don't want 12 chapters to where somebody opens it and they're just overwhelmed and they say well I'm not, I'm not even going to start this whatever and they shove it off to the side I want it to be approachable and so I would go to Mr. Jane, we would talk about the topic and maybe the different lesson breakdowns. And I would try to set, okay, in, in two weeks, this is gonna be done. I'm gonna have my explanations done, I'm gonna have my uh, quizzes done, I'm gonna wrap the thing up, two weeks I'll present it to Mr. Jane, and then we'll talk about the next one. So setting, setting really short-term goals, I think helped a lot, making things not saying, well, I'm gonna have the whole project done in two months. That's not, that's not as, as easy to do as saying, I'm gonna get this chunk done in a short term. So I think planning out your project, making, chunking it up, and, and making those short term goals was really helpful to me. Did you yep. see it was the greatest challenge when you prepared for this? All right, greatest challenge, yeah. So. One of the big problems I faced was when you're, research, when you're researching organic chemistry, you find a lot of stuff made for middle school, high school students, and you find a lot of things made for college level graduate students. And so me going into this with no real knowledge of organic chemistry, I had to find a middle ground between that lower level knowledge and that upper level knowledge. So I had to build the understanding of the upper level knowledge to then make it something uh, digestible for people in the middle. And that was, that was for sure the greatest challenge because you get into those, you get into those topics about um, you know, proton NMR, uh, atomic spectroscopy. It's, it's stuff, it's words that I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and getting down and, and making that easy for a student like me to understand it was definitely the toughest, toughest part. Would you say researching all this has left you with greater appreciation for what teachers do? Oh, a hundred percent. There's so many times I would read something and I'm like, how in the world do I explain this? I don't, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> My question related to this, which do you think was easier, writing the lesson or writing the assessment that went with the lesson? Like, which part do you think was, I don't know, easier? Yeah, I would, say, I would say writing the assessment that went with the lesson, just because when I got to the lesson, I would have to do, you know, research, I would have to do deeper research about it. You know, I would, I would and before my meetings with Mr. Jane, with Mr. Jane I would see, okay, you know, chirality should be something I should touch on. Well, I'd suggest that to Mr. Jane, he'd say, yeah, it sounds good. Well, then I gotta go figure out, you know, what, what is that, you know? I gotta dig a little deeper into that. And so that came with writing the lesson, and then the assessment kind of followed from it. Did it make you want to be a teacher? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. Um, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And I don't want to discourage anybody that wants to be a teacher, but that was enough. <laughs> yeah. First of all, you've done a really good job. Um, Thank you. But I guess my question is, obviously you want this to go beyond this project. You, you actually made something for people to use, mm -hmm. but also you can't do it. Like on my list of things I don't want to do today, it's like a GMB dentist. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but how, so you're going to leave this with Mr. Jane, how are you going to tell him to sell this to students that it's worthwhile to go through it? You know, what, what's the lesson for them to right. want to do it as opposed to doing it and going, wow, that was worthwhile? Right, I mean, I think the big thing is, you know, I can explain the benefits, I can explain to kids, hey, you know, this is going to prepare you for college. But at the end of the day, we're high school students, you know, being prepared isn't always the first thing on our mind. And so I think the important thing to making it for students is, is that it's an, it's an introduction. It's not, 
organic chemistry. It's an introduction to organic chemistry. So it's something that kids can see. They only see, you know, five less or five topics, and they think, okay, you know, I can do this. I can, I can get through this. It's not a twelve-topic sort of thing. And another way I try to make it um, approachable for students is not having every lesson be a solid wall of text. You know, you open up a textbook about organic chemistry, and it's probably going to be a solid wall of text and maybe a diagram or two. Uh, I think it was really important for me to sprinkle in as many videos, quizlets, uh, simulations, stuff that kids could, would break up, you know, those great big walls of text that kids could mess around with or, you know, have a little fun. And so while organic chemistry is never going to be something that I'm dying to do, uh, the, the approach was just to make it as, as easy to ease into as possible. Any other questions? Let me know. How are students going to access this? I know you're trying to make it um, available to the internet. Yeah, so um, with it being a Google site, it's really it's really easy. You know, I can make uh, QR codes. Mr. Jane, Mrs. Castleman can share links to students. Um, just the, the online aspect of it makes it really easy for kids to access. So whether it, whether that's the QR codes, links. Either of those. Yeah. Is there, was there any ever discussion about, I could see this becoming a universal club oriented thing, um, an organic chemistry club that could meet in the morning and just pick it collectively. If there's just a handful of students, you know, sixth or eight students to go through something like this together. Mm -hmm. Why are you shaking your head like that? <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, that would be great, having something to keep you on pace. Me and Mr. Jane talked about maybe making a pacing guide, uh, but one of the things I really like about the course is that it, it's flexible. You know, it's online. You can do it in the summer. You can do it on the car to Florida on spring break, and you can do it whenever, so it's a, it's a thing. I wouldn't want to try to lock students into a you do this for 20 minutes every week in the morning, and if you don't show up, you're gonna miss something. The, the important part of this overall idea is that you're flexible, you can do it where you want, when you want. Well, I was just gonna, that, that community did an excellent job of laying things out, and you know, kind of tying back to your question, I, I, I wonder if, if it's as much for that student who is exploring different careers and they think, oh, I, I don't know much about this. Maybe I I should look for some some resources to check into that a little bit more. And boom, then they've got um, they've got the uh, capability. Maybe maybe even a poster on the wall. Interested in organic chemistry? <laughs> Try this QR code for an introduction. But uh, I think you did a great job with that. Thank you. Yeah, talking about branching into different into different fields a little bit. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of guides online about organic chemistry. Um, you know, I could have just copied and pasted everything from there. But I, I wanted to be specific to high school, to Concordia Lutheran High School students, and I wanted to incorporate stuff from as many places as possible. So I didn't just use one YouTube channel about organic chemistry. You know, a lot of the videos are from the Royal Chemical Society or there's videos from, from engineering channels, there's videos from channels more focused on biology. So kids that want to branch out into different things can use this as, as sort of a launching point, maybe into a whole bunch of different other fields. Lydia. Um, so when I think of this in light of like Campbell's comment on make your honors and minors something that'll be fun, something that you'll want to go do and be passionate about working on. Do you think this fits into that criteria for you or what's something you really have to like work to get motivated to get going? Yeah, so I mean, obviously Campbell followed a passion and that's, that's fantastic. Um, that's just not the route I really wanted to take with this and not saying there's anything wrong with that. Campbell's project turned out great. 
but I wanted mine to be uh, maybe more like traditionally educational. And so, yeah, there were some times where I had to motivate myself to say, all right, you know, I have to meet with Mr. Jane here in a few days. I need to get this done. I need to sit down right now, spend five hours, write, write my summaries, um, do my research, that kind of thing. But I feel like, A, I'm probably a better student because of it. You know, it's, it's you know, going away to college, I, I have to have that self-imposed work ethic to get these things done on time. And I think this helped build those kind of skills in me. And also, um, but also I did have fun with this. I mean, you know, as you can see from the graduation picture, this is not, I didn't want to make this something stiff and something boring. So I, I still did have a lot of fun with it, even though the, the topic that it's about is maybe a little more serious and academic. I guess it, it does occur to me, did you have any aha moments as you were doing your research that apply directly to your work with Cal? <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about directly with my work to Cal, but there were some some aha moments. So something like in the fermentation lesson, we're talking about you know um, alcohol a little bit and why does uh, a wine cork pop when you when you take it off, and that has to do with the uh, the reaction running inside of the wine. And so that was kind of a oh my gosh. Like I never, I never thought about that. So maybe it doesn't apply directly to cattle, but it's close. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening.